the survival guide to life. Hey everyone, how's it going? We got another episode of the survival guide to life. And this week we got Dr. Marnie. Now, uh, doctor, I had a question as in when trying to right our wrongs and sh like uh, what Ida Wells said by shining the light of truth upon them, uh, yeah. what does that sort of mean to you? And uh, what sort of spoke to you when you first saw that? Oh, that's so cool. Because I did quote that in, in my five book series, True Deceit, False Love. I love Ida Wells' perspective on that. And I really believe that truth eventually prevails. But we, in order for us to live authentically, um, you know, in love and light and goodness, we need to be honest. And there are times in our lives we can find ourselves in relationships with people that don't have that value of honesty. And it really can wreak havoc on relationships. So I believe that our voices matter. And shining the light on truth, you know, puts everything in perspective. And, and so we're not working off of a false narrative or a distortion. No, um, you know, within ourselves and, you know, within our moral compasses and when I guess trying to go through one's journey, each and every one of us, you know, has a sense of like, you know, what we think is right or what we really want to do in our core and then what we're actually doing. Now, when we don't really serve our own soul's purpose, don't you think we're sort of like not fulfilling a relationship within ourselves, right? That we we should be. And how does one sort of like awaken from realizing this and try to like come towards the changes? Wow, what an amazing question, Omar. You just are awesome. You really you really are deep and you really get it. Um, I think that there are people that are in various stages of their evolving and their awareness. So I think that, you know, those that have experienced some trauma in their life and that are consciously working on trying to understand what they've gone through, and 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 do that self reflection piece to know their contribution, their role in some of these dynamics. They are the more evolved souls that really can, you know, do that introspection and have a better understanding and want to uh, live authentically. There are others that we come across in our lives. And we could, they could be in our families, they could be at our workplace, they could be in our relationships, that they're not even at the point of wanting to look at themselves and make any kind of changes. You know, they, in fact, there's some people that intentionally are malevolent and cause harm to others, because that's how they're playing out, you know, what they've learned, you know, um, not acknowledging their traumas. They're really living in a false reality. But some people actually take pleasure in harming other people. So you can't really say, you know, that, you know, how will they, how will they get to a point of, of that self-reflection and all that? It, it is a journey. That's something that they would really want to do um, because not everyone wants to do that. And that's a hard reality. You know, usually it's the empathetic, loving people that have been wronged by others that have been lied to and betrayed and, you know, um, find themselves in trauma bonded situations, you know, or targets of abuse. Um, and just, you know, toxic interactions with others that they're the ones that, 
really want to take the time and understand the dynamics. And and to do that, I think it does take the self-reflection, but it also, I believe, takes learning about different personalities and learning about different dynamics so that, you know, when you can kind of put a name to something, you can start to make sense of it a little bit more. You know, our language, our language has the power to hurt, but language also has the power to heal and to help us move towards, you know, a more authentic life and self-actualization. Yeah, and then I I think that's important, like you said, that in in noting um, noting personalities in um, your relationships or even in the workplace. I think in both senses, if you don't know the type of personality you're dealing with or um, the situation you're in, you could be. Uh, very vulnerable or naive and yes. not really see it from uh outside like really get that bird's eye and like it, it it's really hard to do that you know it's really easy when we're always trying to like find the faults of others but then when we you know every time that you point your finger right you got three pointing back That's two, yeah. <laughs> so you uh but with that I, uh, and I, I like what you said, how you said it's not like for everyone where that's where I got to remember, right? It, um, it's just the message and just getting the message out. It's not like the duty of making sure that they do it, if that makes sense. Yes, it does make sense. And, you know, we cannot control other people and what they do, nor should we want to control other people. We can only control ourselves and and how we respond to situations. Um, but, but knowledge is power and understanding different personality types or behaviors, intentions, can really help you in your dealing with others. Like, for example, you know, um, there are many therapists and psychologists out there that use talk therapy and believe that, hey, let's just use a reasonable reasonable approach with everyone, you know, kind of a one size fits all, you know, approach to things when really there are some people, for example, with narcissistic personality disorder, you know, covert malignants or, you know, people that are psychopaths or sociopaths that don't, they, they sort of lack that empathy you know, Gene, um, that they would not respond well to let's just talk it out. Let's let's just come to an understanding verbally because they're not wired that way. They have no interest in changing themselves. Um, they don't see that they even need to change themselves. They are the ones that point the finger at others but don't look at the three other fingers pointing back at themselves. Where it's the, the loving, empathetic, introspective people that do have, like what you said, that bird's eye view. They try to look at the bigger picture and how all of the dynamics interchange and, and play with one another. And they are the ones that, you know, are open to, you know, taking responsibility for some things and making necessary changes. Even if the changes are just putting up healthier boundaries for yourself to protect yourself, you know, they're willing to, to see their role in things. So, so knowledge is very, very important when you're trying to make sense of, of, you know, these relationship dynamics in our families, in our marriages, in our relationships, in our workplaces. So, like, say somebody's, like, coming out of uh, a, a divorce or, uh, say, like, a death in the family or maybe even losing a job, they feel, like, in this darkness and defeated. How does one from that state sort of try to set goals and try to even, like, look forward and, like, find a life, like, worth striving for? Oh, what a, just another wonderful question, Omar. 
Um, and I don't know that there is a one size fits all answer to that. But I think that no matter what our loss is, whether it is a marriage, you know, our health, uh, the loss of a loved one, a loss of a job, I, I think that, you know, one of the first steps after pretty much survival mode, because, you know, we a natural human reaction is to sort of be in fight or flight, you know, um, where our cortisol levels just are through the charts and we're trying to, to just survive and take care of our basic safety needs. I think that at some point early on, we need to acknowledge our loss. We need to grieve the loss of a relationship or a job or whatever. We need to, you know, be in touch with our feelings and and don't just hide them or cover them up or or push them aside and carry on without even acknowledging them. So I think a big step and and I'm not a psychologist or psychiatrist or you know I or a therapist. I'm just I'm just a regular everyday person who has really gone through some challenging adverse situations. And through my own research and my own trial and error have found what, what I believe is a path towards healing and returning to your authentic self. So please, you know, understand my disclaimer here that, you know, I'm just, I'm just sharing my views from, from my experience, um, and, and from, trying to assimilate the experience of others, some of which are, are you know, therapists and, and you know, academics mm -hmm. and, and uh, researchers that, that have great knowledge to impart because of their, of their work that they do. So, but I think, okay, so, you know, get through your fight or flight mode, get yourself to a place of safety and security, and then acknowledge the loss, grieve the loss. Um, and, and the grieving can take many forms and that can go on at various different stages of your healing journey. And then I think at some point, um, you need to do that self-reflection to see, you know, why you're in the situation that you're in, you know, Possibly, what did you do to contribute to the situation? Now, when it comes to certain abusers, you didn't do anything. You were targeted, you know. So you don't need to take on the responsibility of that, you know, oh, I caused someone to abuse me or hurt me because, you know, no, <laughs> no, you didn't. There are malevolent people with the intention to harm and you just happen to be a victim. However, to understand how you got into that situation, how you ignored red flags, how you, how you, um, you know, just went along status quo and, and didn't confront things. You know, you need to know some things about your own personality type that allowed you to be in the situation that you are in. And, you know, sometimes your, you know, involvement, you know, contributes to the dynamic, but sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes, you know, just bad stuff happens to good people. And we have to accept that. But, you know, learning what we're dealing with, doing the self-reflection, and then, you know, acknowledging, okay, where have I been? Where am I now? Where do I want to go? And, and start taking baby steps towards that, you know, realization. That's a, that's a great place to start. So then um, with that, I think then comes like a need for like, uh, I guess you can say a balance of like motivation and drive and uh, trying to mm -hmm. fill, fill that cup of, uh, you know, uh, water every day and making sure it's there what are sort of the things that like every day keeps you like driven or passionate to keep going you know like even in like every day not just some days you know yeah 
Yeah, I, there's a lot of different things I do personally, but that I've heard of other people doing. You know, first of all, knowing who you are, you know, if you are an authentic, empathetic, loving human being, you know, who sees the glass as half full, you are projecting that goodness onto the people and situations that you encounter. So, you know, if you are someone that decides to stay in victimhood or believes that, you know, nothing ever is going to go right for you, you know, you have been wronged and it's a terrible world out there, you will also project that negativity to the people and situations around you. So I think our mindset is huge, you know, to come from that place of, of you know, good intentions is significant. And then, you know, how we started off this conversation with the truth. I think also being real honest with yourself and others is very key that, you know, you hear the truth will set you free and the truth does in so many ways. But there are tangible things people can do. They could wake up in gratitude. They could listen to affirmations or, or look at affirmations so that they have a tangible reminder to that sets the tone for the day, you know, so that you know, okay, I'm going to, I, I don't know what I'm going to face challenge wise, whether it's something external or something within myself internally that I'm struggling with. You know, I can be faced with challenges that I don't really know. Um, will come my way when I wake up and start my day. But if you make a conscious effort to say, okay, I'm going to live in, in, with my integrity, with my values, and I'm going to realize that, you know, stuff happens and challenges that I don't expect might come my way. How am I going to, to handle these challenges? And if you handle them with a positive attitude and mindset, um, and, and for me, it's actually been, you know, cause I've had some devastating losses on my journey, you know, and I've had some wonderful successes as well. But I think for me to realize that I'm on a learning journey that, you know, um, some of these adversities as devastating as they are can actually be blessings to get me closer to being more self-aware and maybe finding my own purpose, which might be different than what I thought it was previously. Yeah, no, that's really interesting. I think sometimes more of give you like a wake up call or like a perspective and like a, a you, uh, you're going the wrong way. You know, you kind of got like a, uh, that uh they call it like highway like when when you're driving on the highway and looking in the same thing for so long you get like hypnotized you know almost where you're right. like forgetting to turn and uh i think that's what that is but in this like quest for i guess you can say like higher self or like passion or purpose um I think it then comes into acknowledging a higher being and with being an uh, an atheist and then acknowledging that God's there, what was that like for you? And not even going down to religion because like um, I've talked to rabbis, I've talked to priests, I'm, I'm Muslim myself. I've even talked to like people who practice Luciferianism, not that I agree with that, but I just wanted to understand their mind and stuff. So just hearing that though, and um, just knowing that um, because the one thing that I admire is any soul that can acknowledge that higher um, energy because it, what I feel like is when you come to see everything and you realize everything, then that's when you notice what you missing, if that makes sense. Yeah, actually it's, it's very interesting. And I, I grew up atheist, so I just didn't have any exposure to any kind of belief in in religion or a higher power or spirituality. 
Okay, so it's it's all of the above. And on my own, as a young adult, I pursued looking into this because I just felt that, you know, our world and everything in it, from the tiniest little insect, you know, to large situations that affect millions of people, there's just too many intricacies here to not think that there's not some divine intervention somehow, some belief in God. And, you know, um, I believe that it, it's, it's uh, given me a real sense of peace to know that I am not alone and that maybe there are some real um, reasons and there's a purpose for some of the challenges and adversities that people face. Because, you know, some things are just so catastrophic, it's hard to to wake up in the morning and put one foot in front of the other and, and carry on. Because, you know, if you really thought about some of the terrible things that happen to, to people, you know, it's it's hard to make sense of it and just say, you know, well, there's nothing bigger going on here. But, you know, I... I have seen so many people come through the darkness to the light by being shown that there is a bigger picture and a higher power um, that is that is guiding us directly and indirectly, consciously and subconsciously. So that that um, made me want to kind of like uh, ask about what um, what was the spark to write your book? Um, you know, uh, um, God came to my garage sale. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you this: the spark was, you know, I had left my kind of American dream or lost my American dream. Uh, there was some choice at some point, but then. The repercussions were not necessarily my choice, but I was forced to deal with. Um, so at one point, you know, after losing most everything, I mean, losing my home, which I thought was paid off, but losing that to foreclosure, losing my assets, my money, my support system due to a smear campaign, I, you know, friends, family and neighbors and, and even people from my church that you think would be there to support you were not. We're not there, you know, so the feeling of really feeling like I'm on my own to handle all of this adversity was, was a very real feeling. And but instead of having feelings of sadness or anger, which would be understandable, and I'm certainly not, you know, made of someone who would be revengeful or vindictive. That's just not part of who I am, but you could understand how really someone could actually have those feelings as well after experiencing such loss, and including the loss of my adult children to parental alienation, which is just devastating for ever, any loving dad or mom, you know, to kind of lose their relationship with their children that they've focused their whole life on, you know, um, you know, all to a false narrative or you know, rewritten memories and lies and all of that. But anyway, I, I had to have a garage sale, you know, from my suburban. And, and I know you're in the Chicago area. I was in the Chicago area for most of my life. You know, it's only recently, the last three years that I moved out to the Caribbean. But, you know, so so you know garage sales in the Chicago area. You know, my garage sale, though, was life-changing because, what could have been moments of complete darkness and negativity were actually filled with love and positivity. And, and I was grateful and thankful for all my blessings. It was my mindset to be positive and look at that glass half full as opposed to looking at the glass half empty. And then I, I believe I was shown spiritual miracles. I mean, the research I've done on some of the things I experienced to learn what other people have done. Um, you know, I like to have a name for something because it helps me understand, but STEs is what it turns out to be, spiritually transformative experiences. You know, that was a term that was coined by Dr. Yvonne Kaysen, 
who had numerous near-death experiences. And, and there are thousands of accounts that have been documented of people that have flatlined, who have died, you know, only to go on and experience some some spiritual miracles and come back to to share their encounters. And, and they all come back with the message of love and light and goodness and that we we are on a journey and that things are supposed to play out the way they are supposed to play out. And that ex- that happened to me at this garage sale. And, uh, and it really reassured me that, yeah, even though I was suffering a lot of losses, I knew life would never be the same, um, that life isn't supposed to stay the same all the time. We're supposed to be growing and evolving. And this was just part of my journey. But it really opened me up to make me question, hey, did God come to my garage sale? Then, you know, um, with what you said and um, these experiences, I think everyone experiences it and everyone has a chance to acknowledge it. And um, I just think it's up to certain people who want to accept it or not because uh, that's all it is in the end. And I think it, it goes back down to what you said again with your mindset and that's the most important thing. But before you could even get your mindset right, if you're not true to yourself or you're going against your your inner, you know, values and stuff, your mindset won't be right because you're not right within. So until you can get your values and everything within right, then you can get your mindset right. And then I think everything else would come right. Oh, my gosh. Omar, you said that so beautifully. You said that perfectly, and that that really makes a lot of sense. And and we're not here, I'm personally not here to push my views about my experiences onto other people and say, this is how it is. I'm just sharing that this is what I experienced, and this is what my takeaways were from this experience. And if it resonates with someone or gets them to think about Maybe I should pay attention to signs and synchronicities. Maybe I should realize that some adversities and challenges in life are really meant there to help us self-actualize. Then then that's great if, if, if they can see the value in that and connect the dots to their own experience. But But it's not my role to, you know, say... This is exactly how this is. This is just my experience. And I, I just think you... You summed it up the the just so beautifully. Yeah, you oh. really get it. You really get it, Omar. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, no, um, you know, besides from um, the speaking and stuff, um, sort of re- recently, what else have you been working on or like um, doing, sort of say, to like keep your uh, time occupied? Or have you had any uh, new endeavors you've been dealing with? Yeah, actually, um, I've been asked to go to Columbia University in New York City and speak. Um, Many choices of what to speak on. I think that I will focus on kind of the topic that we're talking about today with with just being open to signs and and synchronicities um, to how God could possibly present at a garage sale, you know. Um, So I have speaking engagements, book signings. Um, I've been asked to contribute to conversations on numerous podcasts, um, which, you know, uh, I'm even at the point now where I have to decline and turn down some opportunities because there's just too many. It seems like right now with this world's conscious collective, there are so many people that want to have these kind of conversations. And I try to be accommodating whenever I can. But I'm also writing a sixth book of the True Deceit False Love series. Um, certainly not as uh, with the um, urgency as I did with the five book series, because that just came out, you know, as I was healing and, and trying to learn terminology and understand what I was going through. Um, 
you know, that's what started that five book series and it led into some poetry and, and word search and even a survivor's workbook for others who might find writing to be healing. I, I've just finished contributing a number of articles for various magazines um, on various topics. Um, but I also live in the Caribbean and I want to enjoy life here. You know, I'm busy with my gardens. I'm busy swimming in the ocean and hiking the rainforest and just enjoying life. Um, so uh, what what I plan on doing, um, you know, my plan right now is to continue with this um, this push in a way, responding to others' you know requests to have me talk about these things. Um, for just the rest of this year. And then in 2023, I think I'm really going to step back from, you know, my public persona, my public, you know, speaking and, and really focus on some other literary endeavors, some other writing that I have kind of put on the back burner because I've been focusing on, so many other things related to spirituality or, or family trauma. I have a lot of other interests too that I want to pursue. So, uh, and then to get back to some world travel, you know, just, uh, which has always been something I, I absolutely love meeting people and seeing places, you know, that are new and realizing, you know, we all have so much more in common in the world that we do have differences. And I think when you actually travel, and experience that firsthand, you really get a more global sense of, you know, the goodness that is out there in humanity. So, so those are some of the, the things that I'm working on. Plus there's been talk of my spiritual fiction, God came to my garage sale, uh, because it just won the 2022 um, Hollywood Book Fest, you know, as a runner up and, and it's won a few other awards. Uh, there's talk of it actually being a movie. Oh, that's and really so cool. I don't, that's very cool. And we'll see how that plays out. Um, you know, I don't know how much involvement an actual author of a book that might form as the foundation or the title or the basis, you know, how much involvement that would entail. My my assumption, it would be not much. When it gets to maybe that level, there are other people that, you know, yeah. um, take it to the next level. So I have a lot of other things in the works. But, you know, I just am really wanting to just enjoy life and, and get back to this beautiful surroundings. Even though, you know, when I was in the Chicago suburbs, I love the seasons. I loved the beauty of the prairie. I love the city. I love the the suburban neighborhoods, and I love the rural areas uh, of you know Illinois. But it's so exciting to to have this opportunity to to be in the Caribbean. You know, I'm living in paradise, and I want to do a little bit more living as I'm living in paradise. So. Uh Say you watch this video five years from now, um, yeah. and, and you could tell something like uh, quick to your future self. What would you say to her? Hmm. I would say, you know, good job for staying true to your values and your integrity. Good job for bringing awareness to some of these unfortunate family dynamics, to domestic abuse, you know, to narcissism, to parental alienation. You know, good job for encouraging people to do the self-reflection needed to look into their own intergenerational family trauma, you know, to, to see their role in things. And I, I, would, I would be glad that I encouraged people to live in truth and honesty and to be authentic and, and to realize they can pursue their passions. They can pursue their passions. Um, without hurting other people, without, but understanding how, how there are many different personality types and, and we're all here on this journey, but at different levels of our evolving. And then, um, uh, two, two truths and one lie. So anything random, 
Uh, but you tell me two truths about yourself and one lie, and then I'm going to try to guess which one's the oh, lie. Yeah, oh, I remember this game. Um, so two truths and a lie, and I need to mix it up. Okay. Um, I have bungee jumped. Okay. I have caught boa constrictor snakes. I have traveled to Australia. Um, is the lie the bungee jumping? No, I've done it. Oh, uh, then was it the boa snakes? No, I do that all the time. I just oh. caught my third boa constrictor. Oh, wow. Okay, so you're in Australia. Australia. Never okay. been to Australia. Okay, so that, well, I, that I, yeah. I got you there twice. Uh, that, that, that was a good one. And then uh, lastly, um, if you could end on a quote that's uh, sort of been resonating with you recently. I would say a quote, um, be the change that you want to see in the world. Thank you uh, for your time again. Um, and then uh, all your uh, links and all your socials I'll share in the episode description. And um, I, I'd uh, love to have you on a future episode again. And uh, I really benefited uh, a lot from this insightful uh conversation and uh thank you again for your time well omar it's been an absolute pleasure you are just an awesome individual and i am feeling blessed that our paths crossed so like, thank you so much for having me on your amazing podcast you are making a difference in the world with your voice with your perspective with having these con candid conversations so thank you for what you're doing and uh, uh, uh physically mentally spiritually financially consistently the survival guide to life